Now, Naomi, Manuera is Charlotte Streeter. <laughs>
The motel has 20 rooms, 10 upstairs, 10 downstairs. It is built around a kidney-shaped swimming pool. The girl watches from the office window as thirst-haunted coyotes, jackrabbits, birds of all kinds dip their very heads to drink. They lap the chlorine-scented water and lop off, and the girl is grateful for their presence. Her father and her live in a small house next to the motel. Near this place, the night sky is constantly lit pale and milky by the reflection of the freeway. The light falls through the cheap blinds across her bed, making it hard to sleep. And so she wanders along the long, grooved, grooved, long flower grooves between the almond trees until she reaches the edges of the desert. She ducks between the rows of barbed wire, careful not to let them catch and rip her clothes, and keeps walking until she is out on the golden slopes. Just before sunset, the wind howls in capricious moans and sends great wheels of dust whirling and gusting across the open vistas. As soon as the sun has sunk, however, a great quiet peace descends. She climbs until there is no more noise or light, and then she lies back on the coarse grass and lets her head sink into the pillowy loam. The sky is lit, then true night descends with the depth and density of black velvet. The stars come out in their billions, and there is no sediment in this clear, dry air to distort them into fluttering. Instead, she sees them as they are, solid rock illuminated by absent sun. They whirl in slow curves above her. Shooting streaks blur the corners of her vision, but she knows not to move her head to seek them out. She knows that this spectacle takes place above her head every night. She knows that some people remember this, but that most people have forgotten. She knows that the world is too big to understand, but that some of its logic is mired in cruelty, and some of it in joy. The girl is 18 years old. She keeps her hands in her pockets to keep them warm as the earth below her loses its heat. She watches stars. She feels a piercing rage. Mm. The girl's name is Yamuna. She has looked up this name and learned that the waters of the Yamuna are black. The river pours out of the Himalaya and runs through the mountains and out onto the plains like sparkling pitch, like liquid obsidian. It's not pollution. For centuries, the river has run black. People say that the water was once blue and emerald gushing jade, and then far away, in the celestial abodes, the god of death knew bereavement for the first time. Shiva's beloved wife was dead, and he could not revive her. And for the first time, he knew the devastation that he visited upon every other creature. In anguished sorrow, he roamed the earth. And when he came upon the sparkling river, he plunged in. And the river goddess, pulling with all of her caress, all of her powerful sucking vortex, took into herself all his grief. The god rose, salvaged, and consoled. The river turned black. They call her Yamuna, the dark one. The girl likes this story. It connects her to something so much older than she can imagine to a place she has never been. It allows her to imagine that she, too, can swallow sadness and survive. Thank you. <laughs>